by Majo. My name is Yong Chen from the University of Notre Dame. I'm currently a research assistant professor working on a project understanding the mechanisms on the host and pathogen interactions in the context of mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. Today, I will talk about annual models for tuberculosis research. Before I start the talk, I would like to thank the conference organizers for giving me this great opportunity so I may share my expertise with the colleagues across the world. Tuberculosis is airborne disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is an intracellular pathogen. It mainly infects macrophages in the lung and survival and replicates in macrophages. Tuberculosis is currently ranked as top of 10 causes of death in the world above HIV and malaria. According to the WHO report, one third of the global population has been infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Among those infected, five to 10% of people will develop active TB sometime during their lifetime. The remaining 90% of infected people will have latent TB infection. In 2016, over 10 million people had active TB because of TB infection, leading to 1.7 million deaths, including 0.4 million co-infected by HIV. Tuberculosis is a leading killer of HIV positive people. In 2016, 40% of HIV deaths were caused by TB infection. TB is a poverty-related disease. A number of factors may facilitate TB spread. The first factor is poorly ventilated and overcrowded living and working condition, which may provide ideal conditions for TB spread. The second factor is more nutrition and other diseases, particularly HIV, which may reduce body resistance to TB infection. The third factor is limited access to health care. It has been estimated that one person with untreated TB may pass TB on to 10 to 15 people annually. Based on the WHO report, over 95% of TB deaths occurs in low-income and middle-income countries. This map shows you the global TB epidemics. Here we can see TB cases mainly happens in the South and East Asia and the Sub-Sahara areas. These two regions account for over 85% of TB cases in the world. Seven countries, including India, Pakistan, Indonesia, Philippines, China, Nigeria, and South Africa, they are high TB burden countries. They account for a total 65% of global TB cases in 2016. In the most cases, TB is a treatable infectious disease. However, compared to the treatment for the most infectious disease, the treatment for a TB may take six months up to two years. This table shows you the recommended combination treatment for TB sensitive, uh, for the drug sensitive TB. It includes a eight weeks intensive treatment with four antibiotics, isoniazid, rifampine, pyrazinamide, and uh, ethambutol, followed by 18 weeks continuing treatment with isoniazid and rifampine. The treatment rate, success rate for drug sensitive TB is quite high it's over 85% in the world in 2016. This table shows you the four different recombinant uh, combination treatment for drug sensitive TB. Here we can see the efficacy um, of the treatment can change based on the different combination. In the contrast to Drug sensitive TB, drug resistant TB, especially multi drug resistant TB and extremely drug resistant TB, 
is becoming a public health crisis and a health security threat. WHO estimated there were 600,000 new cases. With resistance to the revamping, the most effective anti-TB drugs. This is a first-line anti-TB drugs, of which around half a million had multi-drug-resistant TB. The treatment for revamping resistant TB and multiple resistant TB is longer with more expensive and uh, toxic drugs. The treatment regimens recommended by WHO for drug resistant TB will last for over 20 months or even longer time. The latest data reported to WHO show a treatment success rate for multiple resistant TB is around 50%, only 30% for extremely drug resistant TB. As I mentioned above, tuberculosis is album disease. It's caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. This slide shows you the pathogenic life cycle of mycobacterium tuberculosis in the host. Aerosol particles containing mycobacterial cells is coughed up by the patient with active TB and uptake by the new host. The bacteria is deposited in the lower lung of the new host and recruit the macrophages to the infection site. These macrophages may become infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis and initiate the new round of macrophage recruitment in the lung from the granulomas. The granulomas is a well-organized aggregate of cells. These cells include differentiated macrophages and lymphocytes. In the early stage of infection, the granulomas may facilitate mycobacterial growth and expand the infection by allowing the bacteria to infect new arriving macrophages. As to the development of adaptive immunity in the new host, the granuloma may restrict mycobacterial growth or survival in the host. Uh, however, under certain conditions, macrophages in the granuloma may undergo necrosis to form necrotic core in the granuloma. The necrotic core may facilitate bacterial growth and transmission to the new host. For the TB diagnosis, there are two uh, traditional methods. One is mycobacterial culture. The second one is as the fastening for the TB patient sputum. The left picture shows you the morphology of the bacterial colony on the agar plates. This is the, uh, the patient sputum was placed on the 7H11 agar plates. The right figure shows you the acid fast staining for the TB patient sputum. Here we can see this pink lot bacteria. This is a mycobacterial cells. This slide shows you another um, sample of the pathology analysis uh, for TB patient lung. Here we can see the cavity in the lung of TB patient. This may from the granuloma. We also can see the, uh, this cascading granuloma lesion in the lung of TB patient. Under chest X-ray analysis, we can see a light region in the TB patient lung when compared to the health um, individual. In the TB diagnosis, we also wanted to know what is the histopathological outcome in the lung of TB patient. This slide shows you the histopathological analysis for TB patient lung samples. Um, in the TB patient lung sample, we can see a typical granuloma. This granuloma contains a central core of necrotic lipid-rich material surrounded by fomium macrophages, epithelioid macrophages, and lymphocytes. Uh, the, uh, the pictures on the first row shows you three examples of cascading granulomas uh, found in a TB patient lung. The figure A on the first row shows an early cascading granulomas in the, the lung of people with mediary tuberculosis. 
The figure B on the first row shows you a cluster of Cas18 granulomas. Here we can see a typical necrotical core surrounded by macrophages and the lymph sites. The figure C on the first row shows an old lesion in a human lung. Uh, here we can see a, a fibrous capsule and a necrotic center. The figure A on the second row here shows you another example we can find in a TB patient. We can see the cavity formation here. Um, we just mentioned the granulomas in the TB patient lung. Um, so we wanted to know uh, how the edge of the granulomas uh, looks like. Uh, the figure B on the sixth row shows you the uh, pH staining uh, for the TB patient lump sections. Here we can see on the edge of granulomas there are uh, fibrosis. We also can see the least region is filled by the lymph sites and the macrophages. Uh, why the uh, tuberculosis research is so important today? Um, so we need to look at the current issues we have in the global TB control. The first issue is the TB vaccine. Mycobacterium bovis BCG is only a licensed TB vaccine. It has been used for almost 100 years old, since 1921. The efficacy of M. bovis BCG wins over time after vaccination. It has been found BCG has no or little protection against the pulmonary TB in adolescents and their adults. Additionally, BCG is not recommended for HIV-positive infants because of high risk of the de dissemination uh, BCG infection. The second issue is TB treatment. As I mentioned above, more and more drug-resistant TB is found in the world, so the new drugs or regimens are urgently required to cure drug-resistant TB. We also need new drugs or regimens to shorten the treatment duration. Uh, as I mentioned above, uh, even for the drug-sensitive TB, it will take six months. It's a long time. It will be increase the, um, um, the drug-sensitive TB, the drug-resistant TB percentage in the TB patient. So the new drug, amount, uh, new drug and treatment may be needed to shorten their uh, treatment duration for the both drug sensitivity TB and drug resistant TB. We also need uh, new drugs with uh, low toxicity and high efficacy. The third issue is a TB diagnosis. Uh, for the current TB diagnosis, is we use uh, megabacterial culture as the first staining, as I mentioned above, we also have a PCR-based and the ELASA-based diagnosis. We also have a skin test um, for a TB. However, there's no efficient uh, TB uh, tools we can use to, to discriminate latent infection and active TB infection. So we need to uh, efficient biomarker so we can use it to efficiently uh, discriminate latent TB and active TB uh, in the human. We also need a biomarker we can use to, to determine treatment outcome. As I mentioned, for the TB treatment, it's a long-term duration. So we need to have a biomarker. We can determine the treatment outcome, uh, but not use the bacterial culture as a. In this case, we may uh, decrease the opportunity for drug-resistant TB occurrence. The tuberculosis research will help us to understand the pathogenesis of mycobacterium tuberculosis. We also, uh, we also help us to understand the host defense mechanisms in the context of mycobacterium tuberculosis infection. The tuberculosis study uh, will also help us to develop new TB diagnosis tools, new vaccine, and the new anti-TB drugs and regimens. Animal studies is necessary in a TB research. This slide shows you the current available animal models. It has been used um, in a TB research. They include uh, different species of mice, rabbit, guinea pig, zebrafish, and monkey. 
the monkey is a non-human private animal model in a TV research. To mimic the progress of a TB infection in TB patient, it's necessary for animal models to develop human-like granulomas in the lung. For both rabbits and a uh, guinea pig, a human-like granulomas can be found in the lung after MTB infection. Here we can see the necrotic core in the granulomas from both rabbits and the guinea pig lung. We also can see this necrotic core is surrounded by macrophages and lymphocytes. Uh, however, in early study, it was found the granulomas formed in the MTB infected mice there's no necrotic core. Additionally, the bacteria is restricted in the macrophages. It's not released uh, to the extracellular environment as we find in the uh, TB patient granuloma. We also can see a typical necrotic core in the granulomas. Here we can see the necrotic core surrounded by the macrophages and lymphocytes. So this is a, a typical structure of the granulomas we can see in a TB patient. Uh, we can see from uh, this uh, figure A here, I just mentioned this is uh, a typical uh, TB um, granulomas we can find uh, in a monkey. After drug treatment, a healing granuloma characterized by a central area containing residual epithelioid macrophages with prominent features of involving fibrillar pressure can be found in the lung of monkey. It provides a very good model for the drug study to develop new anti-TB drugs and uh, regimens. Other type of granulomas or lesions also can be found in the lung of a monkey after drug treatment. The figure C here can show you a poorly circumscribed areas of interstitial fibrosis with and without prominent area of cellularity in lungs of monkeys after drug treatment. So this one is also the kind of a lesion after the drug treatment, more similar to the um, healing granulomas. The figure D here shows you another example we can see in the monkey. So this is a fibrocalcific granulomas with a central area of uh, mineralization surrounded by prominent peripheral fibrosis. So the monkey uh, provides very good uh, animal models, so we can use it to develop uh, anti-TB drugs, even anti-TB vaccine. Uh, in the animal study uh, for uh, TB, uh, there's one question, how we determine which animal models we need? in a study. This table partially um, provides provide the guideline uh, to us how to uh, select animal models in a TB research. Here we can see in rabbit, guinea pig, and a non-human primate, we can see the development of necrosis in a granuloma, also the castration and a cavitation in the lung after MTB infection. There's no cavitation can be found in the mouse model. Also, there are few or very rare cas can be found in the mouse lung after MTB infection and no necrosis. Uh, however, uh, because of uh, small size, cost effective, and availability of immunological e agents, mouse are still widely used as mouse model in a TB research. More recently, a new mouse model has attracted the attention of scientists in the uh, TB field. In this model, in this mouse model, uh, we can find three different types of granulomas after MTB infection. And this mouse model is called C3HEBFG. Um, they contain uh, two different mouse backgrounds. One is the C3HEB, another one's FEG background. Um, these three different type of granulomas I can show, I show you here. The, for the type one granu, uh, granulomas, we also call the type one lesion here, uh, most similar to classic human TB granulomas, in which they were solid, encapsulated, uh, caseous necrotic lesion. 
these lesions uh, become evident 35 to 45 days um, after low dose MTB infection in the mouse lung. This uh, lesions is uh, originated as a focal accumulation of fomia macrophages interspersed with neutrophils, often proximal to bronchus. The peripheral markings containing abundant loosely aggregated epitheliooid macrophages interspersed with a small number of scattered lymphocytes. The type 2 lesions is uh, similar to a rapidly progressive uh, <clears throat> pneumonia composed almost entirely of neutrophils. Over time, majority of the type 2 lesions had substantial increased in size and contain a central region of cascading necrosis. The, the central region had evidence of cellular necrosis and cell death. And uh, over the time, it will be uh, similar to the uh, type 1 lesion. The type 3 lesion in the C3HEBFJ mice were cellular inflammatory lesions that were indiscriminable from pulmonary lesions typically found in the uh, Bob C and Black Six mice. The Bob C and the Black Six mice, they are uh, widely used as animal model in the TB research. This slide shows you the correlation between the bacterial numbers with the uh, gross path pathology of the uh, granuloma in the lamb. Here we can see the high number Um, here we can see uh, the high number of the bacteria in the lung, they uh, cause the much uh, bigger granulomas in the mouse lung. Uh, however, um, in the low uh, bacteria number, the size of granulomas is much smaller. Uh, as I mentioned above, TB, is spread through the air from person to person. The tiny water particles containing the bacteria may be expelled into the air when a person with infested TB of the lungs. Um, the coughs, sneeze, speaks even singer can spread the TB to the new host. Therefore, specific personal protective equipment and the laboratory is needed for TB research. Uh, for the animal studies of tuberculosis, BSO, BSO3 facility is necessary. To mimic the natural infection route of TB in human, animals are infected aerosolly. So this is a recommended infection route for TB research. This slide shows you the aerosol infection device. It uh, is one of the um, popular devices in the TB research. This is a glass core inhalation exposure system. It may generate aerosolized bacteria and infect mice. The instrument consists of a large uh, circular tank. This is also called aerosol chamber that contains a circular um, basket with five pied compartments for animals. So this is a five pied shaped compartment um, basket. The aerosol chamber has a heavy lid. This is a heavy lid with four locking handles. Let's lock the lid tightly against the heavy duty gasket. The lid also has two UV lamps under its underside and these lamps come on during the decontamination cycle of instrument operation. The front of the instrument uh, contains a control panel uh, with four timers for the various cycles of operation, uh, two air flow meters and two air control knobs, and three holes with the clamps used to attach the nebulizer. When the instrument is in operation, 
compressed air is flow through the nebulizer and produce a very fine mist of the bacterial suspension, which is, the, is then carried by a large volume of air uh, flow into the air rosso chamber here. This fine mist is then inhaled by animals within the basket. After the uh, airflow pass through the chambers, the airflow then exits the chamber through two HEPA filters and a superheated exhaust stack. This is an exhaust stack. The, where the air is subsequently incinerated before release. So in this case, we can uh, remove all the bacteria particles before released to the air. After the nebulization process, the machine runs a cloud decay process in which the aerosol chambers is purged with fresh air. This may also help in drying any bacteria attached to the fur of animals, a surface of baskets and their chambers. A final step is a UV light treatment in which the UV lamp under the lid comes on and uh, decontaminates the top surface of the basket. Uh, except uh, the techniques we used to infect mice, except, except the one we mentioned on the previous slide, there's also other techniques we can use, including intravenous injection and respiratory injection. Intravenous injection uh, can be finished um, through the tail vein or retroorbital orbital sinus. For the respiratory root infection, uh, we can infect mice um, using intratracheal injection or intranasal infection. Uh, for intratracheal injection, the bacteria is injecting to the lung of mice. Uh, directly. Uh, recently, uh, we developed a new technique for intracheal injection. This slide shows you the assembling of this injection system. There are three main components in this system. One is the installation um, platform. The, sec the second one is the Illuminator, this adjustable illuminator, so we used it to uh, localize the tricky of mice. The third is the glass desiccator. We first used 3D printer technique to generate the main part of installation platform. Here, the 3D printer technique is based on the process uh, called additive manufacturing. Uh, this technique uh, a 3D print technique is becoming more and more uh, important right now to create custom designs or sometimes difficult to manufacture products. The file uh, for this um, platform is available online. It's free um, for everyone. You can find the link for this file in our paper. After we have released this platform, we also generated two different a uh, metal bar, once a cross bar with mouse inside the hanger, the second is adjustment um, metal bar. We first insert cross bar into the um, main part of the installation platform and insert the adjustment bar into the uh, one of the three holes in the uh, platform. So we can adjust the height of the um, cross bar according to the size of animals in the study. Um, after we have this system assembled, after we have this system assembled, um, we need to prepare mice so we can inject the mice. Um, we use uh, um, inhalation as a flooring to anesthetize mice in a heavy glass desiccator, as I assume here, as I assume here, a glass desiccator. Um, the mice were then monitored to ensure sufficient depth of anesthesia.
Uh, after the mice is ready for injection, each mouse was gently suspended by its superior incisors on the mouse incisor hair and its body placed on to the slot on the bevel. This is a slot on the bevel of the platform. The Scott uh, arc adjustable illuminator with a double goose neck was positioned near the pharyngeal epiglottic region of the mouse neck. The tongue of the mouse was gently pulled out to the left side using small cheeses and a lamb pushed down with a micro uh, spatula. The check here was visualized uh, by a perky tenuous chance, uh, chance illumination using the light emitted from the end of a gooseneck fiber optic end. 30 to 50 percent of samples, this is a bacterial suspension, were gently uh, injected into the lamb by intratracheal injection uh, using Appendorf research um, pipettes and uh, gel loading tips. After injection, the mice were wrapped with a clean paper towel and, and returned back to their new cage. Uh, mice were monitored until they were fully recovered from anesthesia. The figure E here shows you the yield of bacteria in lamb uh, one day after injection. Here we can see 90% of bacteria is injected into the lung of mice efficiently. To determine the bacterial numbers of burdens um, in the different organs, uh, the organ can be homogenized using hand-operated tissue grinder. Here is your uh, glass hand-operated tissue grinder. We also can use electronic power uh, grinder. Um, we should be careful when we use the, this tool, um, tissue grinder. Uh, this, uh, the experiment should be uh, done in the passivity cabinet. The homogenization process may generate significant aerosol hazard. So the uh, glass box connected to the safety uh, cabinet is highly recommended, especially for, especially for electronic power grinder. Um, next question is, what assay we can do or perform in an animal study for tuberculosis? We can look at the bacteria input or burden in the different organs uh, by the bacteria culture on the agar plates or use acid fasting for the organ sections. We also can look at histopathological uh, change in the uh, organ sam uh, samples using HE staining or immunostaining. Um, other experiment we can do is we can perform flow cytometry, uh, like the flow cytometry, RT-PCR, even RNA sequencing, or uh, ELASA to look at the immuno immunological uh, change or response in the tissue after MTB infection. Flow cytometry can be used to determine different populations of immune cells after MTB infection and to see uh, which um, population of immune cells is important to kill bacteria or facilitate bacterial growth in the tissue. RT-PCR uh, can be used to determine specific host or megabacteria RNAs in the tissue. RNA sequencing is a more powerful technique. It can be used to determine the host or megabacteria gene expression profile in a certain tissue after MTB infection. ELASA is used to determine the subcan or cutcan production um, in the tissue. We also can use the blood samples from the MTB infected animals. Um, you know, using this blood sample, we can look at the different host proteins, such as the subcans or, or chemicans. Um, we also can look at the peripheral profile of blood cells in the um, whole blood of animals to determine uh, which, uh, which a cell type is important to kill bacteria. Uh, in a TB uh, biomarker study, we can look at the um, 
specific biomarkers we can use to, to uh, diagnose uh, TB in the future. In a uh, anti-TB drug study, uh, in, we can uh, look at the drug stability in the uh, animal uh, blood. In this case, we may develop more effective or stable anti-TB drugs. The tuberculosis research is important today. Uh, as I mentioned above, uh, it will help us to, to understand the bacterial pathogenesis uh, in a host and uh, also understand the host innate and adaptive immunity uh, response to MTB infection. The study will help us to do develop new or more effective uh, TB vaccine and anti-TB uh, drugs and regimens also help us to, to find the uh, new TB diagnosis tools. Uh, the final goal of the TB research is to contribute to the uh, global TB control and finally find the solution to end the TB in the world. Um, finally, I would uh, thank you uh, for your attention. I'll be very happy to take any questions. Thank you, Dr. Chang, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window. Type your questions into the box that appears on your screen and click the Send button. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is, how to measure, how do you measure mycobacterium numbers in a stock used in infection? Uh, it's a good question. We do need to know the bacterial numbers in a stock. Uh, this stock will be used for the infection. Um, to determine the concentration of the bacteria in the stock, the uh, bacteria suspension, this we, we get from the uh, stock, is diluted in PBS in a 10-fold series and then plated on 7H10 or 7H11 agar plates. Uh, the bacteria colonies are counted three to four weeks after incubated at 37 degrees. Um, before we start the experiment, the, all the stock, is, uh, the stock is stored at minus 80. Thank you for that answer. Our next question is, how many mice may be infected once using glass coal aerosol device, and is any anesthesia region needed? Um, in one cycle, uh, up to 80 to 100 mice may be infected when we use a basket with five pi shaped compartments as shown on the slide. But sometimes we also can use a smaller basket. In this case, we can infect less uh, mice. Uh, in an uh, infection, no anesthesia agent is needed. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we have time for one more question. The last question is, how does glass coal inhalation system get decontaminated post-infection and sterilize the airflow before release during the experiment? Uh, this is an excellent question. Um, because the safety is always the first concern for the researchers uh, when we work on the uh, tuberculosis. So when we use the glass core system, so there are different steps we can uh, decontaminate. The first is during the infection, um, before release into the air, the airflow is passed through the two HEPA filters and then a superheated exhaust stack that incinerated any residual particles as I mentioned on the slide. The second is the after infection, um, there is a cloud decay step in which the chamber is purged with the fresh air. They can remove any residual bacteria on the fur of animals in the surface of the basket and uh, chamber. Um, after this step, uh, uh, there is a, a treatment with the UV light. As I mentioned, this UV light is under the uh, leads, uh, the underside of the lid. Uh, this UV line is, comes on uh, that we are decontaminate the top surface of the basket. The third is after infection um, finished, the nebulizer and the basket 
will be removed from the aerosol device and outcrypt. The surface of the chambers um, is decontaminated using disinfectant. Thanks.